chino, a twill weave, medium weight, very closely woven, very tight, lightly brushed, but a slight shine as well. The brushed part you can feel, feels a little more like that suede effect. This is going to have a very steep twill line on the face and on the back, it's going to look like plain weave. Go figure. This is durable. This is abrasion resistant, right? It's a nice sturdy fabric. You usually see it from cotton or cotton blends and you know, pants, especially uniforms, lots of wear and tear, suits, other assorted workwear, chino. This is denim. Twill weave happens to be a warp faced twill weave. Why? Because we see more of the warp than navy rather than the weft, which is the white. See that on the back. Medium weight. Of course, with denim now, it could be lightweight to heavyweight, but anyhow, medium weight, sturdy, durable. It holds the garment shape well, right? It's got body, so it holds it well often made from cotton and now of course with the stretch cotton blends jackets shirts jeans overalls skirts bags and so forth drill this is a twill this is a warp faced twill so we see the warps and not the weft so much medium to heavy weight as you can tell it's definitely got its body there steep twill lines. This is a sturdy, dense fabric. So uniforms, very, very popular. Trousers, jackets, some shirts and dresses on the more medium, lighter weight end of things. Accessories, drill. Gabardine, nice twill weave. Warp faced, medium weight, firm, durable, can be water and wind resistant because of that tight weave. Slight twill lines on the face, right? Not super obvious ones. Smooth on the back, cotton, worsted wool, polyester, rayon, silk, poly cotton blends, poly wool blends. Coats, trousers, skirts, suits, workwear. Very versatile, very nice, very nice feeling, gabardine. This is Glen Plaid. It's a broken twill. How do I know it's broken? Because the diagonals run in both directions. It's not continuous in one direction. So I get this checkered, multi-design effect. Part of it looks like stripes, part of it looks like herring, uh, excuse me, hound's tooth. It can look like a lot of different things, but this is Glen Plaid. So it's groups of colored threads in the warp and the weft to get this effect. Wool, linen, cashmere, polyester, yeah, but suits, coats, blazers, trousers, it's got some nice drape to it, some nice flow, Glen Plaid. Hampton Twill. This is a medium weight, has a full body drape. There is a crispness to it. It's not totally stiff, but it's still very soft. This is not officially a brushed fabric, but it definitely feels brushed. Part of that is because it's rayon. This is made out of lyocell, so you have that softness that comes with rayon, but part of it also is the twill structure in this case. Suiting, pants, jackets, sports shirts, decor, could be made out of cotton, wool, rayon, as I said. Hound's tooth, a broken twill. We have groups of colored yarns in the warp and the weft that create this pinwheel effect. Often made from cotton or wool, synthetics too. Suits, blazers, jackets, 
skirts, trousers, houndstooth. Antique satin. So a satin weave, but a slub yarn, one with thick and thin portions has been used. So you get that rough look while still having that very, very smooth shiny of a satin. Silk, acetate, nylon, polyester, a lot of times used as draperies and you see the back as the face. Antique satin. Duchess or duchies, depending on who's saying it, satin. This is a heavy, very luxurious satin. This is definitely a Rolls Royce kind of a thing. It has wonderful shine on both sides. It has body, it drapes beautifully. It is just a wonderful, luxurious, amazing fabric. Wedding gowns, absolutely, but expensive wedding gowns. <laughs> but Dutchie satin, shine on both sides. Heavy, luxe, yummy. Really, really yummy. Fortuny satin. So a satin weave, filament fibers, that's how you get the nice shine. But this has a special texture pleating. So this texture has been pressed into the fabric. Moleskin. A satin weave. Filament warp yarns, napping fill yarns on the surface. So it's been brushed to give that soft effect on the face. The back is still smooth, though, what do we want to say? The rough smooth of satin, <laughs> but a brushed satin weave, moleskin. This is a satin, a satin weave. This could be light to medium weight, even heavyweight in some instances. This always uses filament yarns. That plus the structure with the long floats is what gives this that ever so shiny. The back is dull in comparison, right? Nice shiny surface. Filament yarns, usually low twist. That way, again, you get maximum shine. Very close, very closely woven, close warp there. Very lustrous surface. Silk, nylon, polyester, wool, blends. This particular one is acetate, which is just, you know, not as yummy as silk, but still it'll work. And it is what fancy dresses, uh, various gowns, corsets, lingerie, even shirts, ties. Sateen, a satin weave, fill-faced, so we're seeing the fill or the weft, not the warp, with a staple yarn, like a cotton, versus a filament yarn, like a silk. So you still have that smooth surface. You can get a semi-lustrous effect. Nowhere near the shine of a traditional satin, but, you know, slacks, uniform, even shoes. Doesn't have the same drape as that filament, but there we go, sateen. Corduroy, this is a woven cut pile. So you see the columns, the whales of a corduroy. So there's pile built up in columns and then it's cut. So we have fuzzy smooth, fuzzy smooth, fuzzy smooth. This is medium to heavyweight. We have our lengthwise whales. Um, it's a brushed nap. So there's a difference there. Cotton, wool, polyester, rayon, blends, jackets, slacks, uh, work shirts, overalls. Uh, note, it does look a little bit like knit ribbing because you can see those columns, but this does not stretch. 
So corduroy is definitely woven and not a knit ribbon. Velveteen. This is a cut pile, a woven cut pile with our pile that kind of stands on the surface. It has a much shorter pile than velvet and is traditionally made with a staple fiber as the extra yarn. So it is not shiny like a filament fiber velvet. Um, cotton, cotton blends, rayons, so that can be shiny. Dresses, robes, skirts, blazers, velveteen. Velvet, a woven cut pile. So we have an additional yarn on the surface that's been cut to stand more or less erect. Filament yarns so that you get the shine. So silk, obviously, uh, rayon, very popular, but all kinds of synthetics now with the acetate and polyester and all that other good stuff. Uh, the luster changes with the nap, right? When you brush it, one direction is going to allow that pile to lay more flat so you get a shinier edge and the other direction makes it all stand up so you get more of that uh, shaded look as it were. So of course anytime you make a garment with this you need to make sure that all of your pieces are cut so that if you brush it it all runs in the same direction. Up or down doesn't matter so much just so that they all go in the same direction. You don't have those pieces going elsewhere. Medium to heavy weight, dresses, suits, blazers, trousers, home deck, all kinds of fun stuff. A uh, couple ways that they make this, which is really cool. They can do it as we do so many of the other piles where an additional loop is formed on the surface and then they cut the top of that loop and there's your pile. Or the old fashioned way was to weave two layers of fabric at the same time with that additional yarn traveling between the two layers and that becomes the pile. So those two layers go through the loom and then a knife would split them and I'd have two layers of velvet. Very, very cool, right? But there we go. Terry cloth, so woven terry. This is a woven, uncut pile because it's loops. We have loops in this case on the face and the back of the fabric. Not always, but often with woven. Medium weight to heavy weight, soft, very absorbent, hence being towels and such. Uh, cotton or blend could actually be made from silk or rayon, get you that lovely effect. But a low twist yarn that forms the loops, that's why it's so absorbent. Sweatshirts, possibly loungewear, possibly those would be more comfortable as a knit terry, but definitely towels and robes out of woven terry cloth. Dobby weave, simple geometric design, woven. This one does not have extra yarn. Right? The yarns that are being used are all included in the fabric. Dobby, of course, could be lightweight, medium weight, even heavyweight. We could have patterns, we could have texture. It could be a pique, it could be a waffle cloth. This is a Dobby weave. How do I know? Simple geometric shapes. Dobby can be much fancier than your basic twill satin, etc., but nowhere near as fancy as a jacquard. So I have simple geometric shapes woven in. This one could be considered an extra yarn because, gee, the design elements have that extra yarn in there, and all we've done is float, essentially, from one portion to the next. So an extra yarn dobby weave. Could be cotton, linen, polyester, silk. You could make suits, trousers, skirts, all kinds of things. Firm, it's going to hold its shape. Is not, uh, well, this particular one is not a soft drape, right? Very firm drape. PK. A dobby weave with a raised effect. So a thicker yarn used in some places to get that raised effect. The 
padded or embossed. Subtle, yes, but it's still there. Medium weight, crisp, cotton type, doesn't have to be cotton, of course. Uh, the face and the back tend to look very different from each other. Um, you could have a waffle pattern, a bird's eye pattern, a corded design, uh, could be from cotton or silk or polyester. Casual clothing, collars and cuffs, woven pique. Double faced wool, so something that has two face sides. This is not true double cloth. You cannot separate it into two separate layers of fabric. It just gives the appearance of two different fabrics in one. So reversible, obviously, cottons, wools, polyesters, coats, jackets, skirts, trousers, uh, in a lighter weight version, not this one. <laughs> coats and jackets for this one. Double cloth. In this case, this is true double cloth, not double faced. This is two different layers of fabric that are woven at the same time with an additional yarn weaving those two layers together. So if you really wanted to, you could completely separate into two separate layers. Right? allows you to have those completely different designs. In this case, more of a gingham and a plain, but I could have herringbone on one side and check on the other. Could be all kinds of fun things. Um, traditionally, a wool gives it, you know, that nice body and warmth to it. This is definitely more of the jacket blazer kind of a thing. This is a thicker one. Very soft, very scrumptious, but a thicker, warm double cloth. Double cloth. This one is a very fine one. This is almost like a gauze double cloth. It is two layers. Let's see if I can get the edge for you. It is very hard to see because they are very fine, very loose layers. In fact, you're hardly going to be able to tell there, but it is two completely different layers. I would say that you could separate it into those two layers but they are so loosely woven that to separate them would be to unravel them completely. So a nice, gauzy, light, delicate double cloth. Brocade, a jacquard weave, medium to heavy weight, luxurious, multiple colors, okay? slightly raised, slightly, as in Damascus flat, brocade has a little bit of height to it. Often made from cotton or silk, could be gowns, blazers, suits, dresses, decor. This one is fairly close to a damask in that it's almost reversible. A true damask, you would see an exact photo image reverse of the design. This one, on the one hand, you would think damask because it is definitely a reversible kind of image, but there is one side that's the better side. So, brocade. Jacquard, intricate, multicolor, 